Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Sahaj Times Podcast. We need a disclaimer for this episode. We'll be talking about some real life experiences with Shimadaji and I just would like to say don't fall in the trap. We're not doing this to emphasize the gap between the people that lived with Shimadaji and spent important times with her in her physical form. That could lead to that sad feeling, oh, I will never leave those experiences, you know? Well, Mother taught us that we are constantly in her presence, but in a spiritual way. And just like you would dress properly for a puja in her presence, now we have to wear a good subtle system to be in her presence. Uh, it's easier said than done. I'm not saying this because I'm there. I'm really far from there. It's just an interesting... I don't know. It's, it's just really interesting to me. My co-host, you already know, Fabrizio Trezza. How are Hello you, Fabrizio? Hello, everyone. Very good, very good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the support for the previous episode. And uh, it was amazing. It was the most dynamic episode we had so far, I think, because we have received emails and comments. Everything was really cool. And everyone shared their experiences. Yeah. That was actually... Yeah. Just today, somebody wrote to me, and I thought it was quite interesting. And there's a shout out to people listening that if you want to share also some of your experiences, and some people did in the comment, and some people responded, it really created a bit of a of sense of community and sharing. And, uh, you know, some of those examples also we can take as example for next uh, episodes and so on and so forth. So, uh, again, if there's something you like or something you want to ask, or something you want to give a feedback, uh, you know, it's actually really good because everybody gets to see it and then creates a bit of this collective dynamic, which was really good with the last episode. Uh, but this one is going to be a really holy episode, I think, <laughs> uh, because we are back with this um, format. Yeah. Real life experiences with Shimadaji. And who's our guest? Yeah, so for this, I would call it a series, I would say. We have a mm, series yeah. of, of, of uncles and aunties that very precious, uh, have very precious memories that we want to keep and share with everyone. So today we have a very special auntie. I will say the name at the very end. First, a little introduction. She got a self realization in 1981 in Rome. Uh, and also very interesting, actually, auntie had a very nice uh, diplomatic career. So professionally also very developed. To me, something very interesting when you have somebody who's uh, established in Sahaj, but also in society. It's such a, a very nice combo, and very nice combo for the, an episode. So uh, without further ado, we are going to have Auntie Ruth from Geneva joining us. Welcome, Auntie. Welcome, Auntie. Thank you very much. Good evening, Fabrizio and Lele. <laughs> We are very happy to have you and a bit uh, following up on what Lele was saying um, about uh, having experience with Shimaraji and make them a bit more relatable. Uh, there is in several Yuva Shakti seminars, uh, sometimes even with children now born in Sahaj, sometimes there's this question of, oh, I wonder how life was with uh, Shimaraji, which of course is something very unique. And one thing that I've heard you say in the past and many other people is that uh, it was, of course, fantastic and it was an absolute privilege. But at the same time, it comes with uh, quite a bit of work, uh, quite a bit of tests and, 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 and challenges also, I would say, if, 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 if that's a way to say it. So today we invited you to, to share a bit with us. How was your experiences? How were your tests? You know, which one did you pass? Which one you didn't? And a bit to, to get a little of a peek into, into your experience. Okay, thank you very much. And yes, relating to the disclaimer which Lele used at the beginning, it was, of course, a great privilege to spend a lot of time with Shrimataji, but it was also very challenging. So uh, there are things which we would never have dared doing, which now one dares do because Shrimataji is not there in person. Auntie, I have a question. Um, because uh, surprisingly, we, we have a really young audience. And is that type of young audience that they, their only knowledge about Shimadaji is related to the videos that they have seen. So they don't know Shimadaji outside of the videos. And since you spent some, so much time in their company, uh, can I ask you, like, 
is is really general, but if you could answer like more with the like specific stories, I don't know if you have anything ready. Um, how was your experience with Shimadaji outside the pujas, outside the hangar, outside the meditation, and just outside? Oh yes, there were lots of such moments. Either when I would drive her, I had a little car, hmm. a little. Uh, uh, Renault 5 and she would sit next to me in car, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. they were quite long journeys. Mm -hmm. or, or once I was, I, I remember specifically once I slept in the room with her. Uh, or moments like that, lots of moments. Or so when she would go for a program and everybody would leave for a program and she would go later. While, for example, Grégoire was making the introduction and then I would drive her to go onto the stage so that she would not need to wait. So many times. And sometimes it was just like chit-chat. For example, once she told me how to cook rice. And of course, I tell myself I will remember and I forget it instantly. <laughs> or she told me how to fold a sari. Or she would explain to me motives on her sari or on, for example, a silver bowl, which she had just got for a country, for, for pujas. Or she would, uh, uh, I mean, she would go from light to heavy topics. Once I remember in India, she told me about, you spoke before about dress code, about the way Victorian women at the time of Queen Victoria would best and she told me ah, you know it would be good if the yoginis would dress in such a way and I pulled my ears but I was wow. while she was telling me describing to me how maybe we should dress or how they dressed at the time of Victoria I thought my gosh I could never go to work like that you see <laughs> or she would also uh, give us advice for example when I was pregnant I had a lot of uh, uh, sickness. So she told me, Ruth, you have to drink Coca-Cola. And I detest Coca-Cola. So I said, no okay, way. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will take Coca-Cola zero or something, at least, you know, to avoid. And I would not say anything. I would just say, yes, Sri Mataji, because you don't say no to Sri Mataji. And she would tell me, no, 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 no. You take the normal Coca-Cola, but you put salt <laughs> in it to take the gas away. Oh, so wow. I would say, yes, she muttered, she okay. And then I did that, of course, after that. Or she told me uh, during my pregnancy, you have to eat chocolate. So she would tell us how to eat, or I mean, what to eat or what she wanted to eat. Once she called me in Rome before she was coming to Rome and she told me, Ruth, you know, I am born out of the sea. So you have to cook fish for me. So I said, yes, she muttered, wow. of course. Wow. So it would go, or once she would tell me, you know, and that there were other people in the room, but uh, she said, you know, the name Ekakini means I am alone or you are alone. And she said, because I am like a big tree, a big oak, and you are all little flowers around me. So mm -hmm. even when the yogis are around me, I am just alone. I am different. I mean, wow. so she would speak of such moments of so once actually several times in bulgaria she told me you know ruth this is the last judgment this is the last judgment and i was too shy or i don't know if i was stupid or on the contrary if i did the right thing but i said yes she mattered. i did not ask her questions should i have asked her questions was that a little test for me or should mm. I just have remained silent and said yes because what do you answer to you know Such a God statement. and the incarnation who tells you it's the last <laughs> judgment so there were all kinds of moments another funny moment we were driving her back in Vienna from a public program and uh, Grégoire, who was there and driving her, normally his car had been towed away, which was quite funny after Shumataji told him to park his car elsewhere. And he no, Shumataji <laughs> would be fine. So anyway, his car was towed away and she was in my car, sitting next to me and uh, in my little car. And uh, I did not know Vienna. I had just arrived the day before or something. And in the car, after the program, very often she would laugh and was very 
exuberant, if you want. And there she started talking about the powers of men and women or the qualities of men and so on. And then at some point she laughed and she uh, kind of slapped my thigh while I was driving with my foot on the gas next to me. And she was saying, don't worry, Ruth, you anyway, the women have all the powers or something like that. <laughs> and she would laugh joyously. <laughs> so there are hundreds of moments like wow. that. I have to make sure my kids don't listen to the part of the Coca-Cola and chocolate because <laughs> there will be another moment where mother will be misquoted out of context in the in the house <laughs> but that's incredible now also sometimes i feel she would do that to to break our conditioning no like so obviously make us do something that uh, you know pushes your limit again in in a different way than you know not sleeping but maybe a conditioning that yeah but for that that was the pregnancy specifically yeah, that specific really time. helped me for the pregnancy but again it shows never any strict rule and then she would also play with us i remember there was always as she describes it i think these big dramas when she would need to go to the airport and take the plane Yes. And once we were in Tivoli and I thought, okay, now, Ruth, you don't fall in the trap. You stay all calm and centered and you wait for Shimataji to come and you don't, you know, get nervous. So look at your watch. And I was waiting and then Shimataji came into the car to, get, to, get, to go to the airport. And she said, you see, Ruth, you did not need to be nervous to go to the airport. We're perfectly on time. And so I said, of course, yes, Shimataji, because also you don't say, Shimataji, for once I was not nervous or whatever. Yes. <laughs> But also what stands out like from all of these is that so far we have talked about tests, but there are really small tests. Like you, I mean, also us, we are literally tested for every single thing at this point. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, these are, what I've told you, are little tests. There's one story about higher dharma and lower dharma. I mm. want to tell you in the yeah. context of tests, because I feel that for many of us, we consider, and, and uh, now just uh, like at the time of Shimataji, where we say, yes, but this is proper, that is proper, so what should I do, and so on. And um, it was a test leads to uh, a boss, my job, and a boss whom I liked very much. And me, I don't know if it's because I'm Swiss or what, but once I promise and give my word, I like to be extremely reliable. And nice. again, recently, Shimataji said, when you promise something, you have to hold it. And as you will see, again, it's a question of discrimination. Yeah. So I had obtained the authorization to go to India tour. And for me, it was very important. It was the first year, maybe even I went to India tour, the second year, I can't remember now. But I had promised to my boss that I would come back if my colleague needed a, an operation uh, on the eyes and I had to replace him to, to do his job also. So I had promised and I loved this boss very much. Mm -hmm. And then I was in India and came the telegram, come back, your colleague gets an option. No. Terrible dilemma, what do I do? So I kind of, I went to Shrimataji and I told her Shrimataji, they want me to go back. And she said, oh, but uh, the delegation, is it really necessary? She did not seem convinced, but she said, well, if you have to go, you go. And basically, she left me the decision, right? Just with two, three little light remarks. And then I meditated, or there was a public program, and I was meditating on Shimataji. And I thought, well, I think she's telling me that I have to stay. So I spoke with a doctor, Yogi. We sent a certificate saying, sorry, I have pneumonia, or I have something like that. And I stayed. But I felt absolutely terrible inside. Wow. And then the week after, there was a Havan. And Sri Mataji uh, told me after the Havan, so Bruce, how are you? 
And uh, I said, oh, Shri Mataji, I'm fine. But what a test you passed me. You know, you had me pass. <laughs> and she laughed and she, she said, you passed it. And a uh, little time after, then uh, I think it was the end of the official India tour, but I can't remember if she wanted me to stay or what. And I even stayed longer. So together I stayed five weeks or six weeks, which was, of course, long after my holidays allowed and so on. And again, we sent a medical certificate. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I was, of course, absolutely terrified to go back to the office <laughs> to have to face my boss, right? And I was all the time saying, okay, Shumataji, I have to have faith in you. I have faith in you, Shumataji. Nothing will happen. I have faith in you. And my heart was doing boom, boom, boom. I came to pick me up at the airport. I had, I think, just the time to shower or not even and to go straight to work. And that morning, there was indeed a delegation arriving from Switzerland, where I had to be member. And Shimataji, when she made her remarks, said, oh, I thought there was a delegation. And so she wanted me to come exactly back for that delegation. And two days before, my boss was taken in emergency back to Switzerland for the hospital. And wow. I did not see him for one month or two. And so, and I arrived, of course, quite tired. So uh, the, the number two boss said, uh, yes, you look not too much in shape. But I still had some red from the kumkum -kum there because they were marriages. <laughs> and the head of the delegation told me, oh, miss, you seem to have attended a marriage in India because you have oh. some red here. <laughs> so I kind of looked to me, as you can imagine. And my mm -hmm. boss, when he came back from hospital, came back to work, he said, Ruth, you know, I did not know if I should leave you and send an uh, ambulance, airplane to rescue you, or if you were not telling the truth. Oh, and wow. uh, I did not answer, but believe <laughs> me, that was a very heavy test. And that engraved into me the wow. question of, higher dharma, lower dharma. Of course, being reliable was dharma, but the dharma to be with Srimataji, with yeah. what Srimataji wanted, that was higher dharma. Wow. And wow. I think actually, Anti, this is a, because I've seen with few yogis, sometimes this can be a very confusing scenario because what I feel was really good is that within yourself, um, you were very aware and also aligned with your lower dharma like you you had conquered already that part and and so you could go beyond it's like mm -hmm. you know shimaji said uh you know yeah Sri rama and then Sri krishna you, but you you first have to achieve the right heart you can't just go straight to the vishuddhi right and i think this sometimes for yogis can be a bit interesting because especially when they're new in sahaj uh you can see sometimes that they're like oh Saj is everything and then they don't take care of their normal life you know it could be their family or you know uh but you can go beyond only when you have conquered something <laughs> and i think it's such an, an important point i think in your case the, the example is very beautiful because your first reaction was to try to make all the dharmas fit you didn't take it lightly and be like hey, who cares uh, work doesn't really exist no work does exist and, and we need to be professional. We need to be dependable. That's how. We, that's what you're showing as a yogi, right? So I think this is a very important lesson, um, especially. I don't know. I feel maybe in Italy, for example, when I when I came to such one, one thing is beautiful, and there is the heart, and everything is fantastic and flows very fast. But sometimes I feel in my youth, uh, certain decision by people around me were taking a bit too fast and and the the importance of being dependable being it was discredited a bit too fast in the name of religion but that's also a bit you know it becomes a question of hamsa right and there's a bit of a challenge sometimes okay. well i was thinking another example of tests which i did not pass because the more time goes the more i see all the tests i did not pass <laughs> uh, but which is linked to I was thinking or I am thinking. And you know how often Shimataji says in talks, oh, but that person said I was thinking. So it was in Strasbourg in France, 
and uh, she came, I don't know, a bit more than 24 hours maybe. And before she left, she went, she said, we go shopping. So we went shopping, we were a little group of us, we were in a department store. And at some point she turns towards me and she says, Ruth, please go to the men's clothes department and ask if they have, and then she says a name I have never heard, right? And she says, we are going to look a bit around and then we'll go in the cafe of the department store to eat some sandwich before I go to the airport. Yes, Shimataji. So I start thinking, well, I have never heard of this word, you know, for a man's piece of clothing, what kind of thing is that, and so on. And it was around lunchtime, there were not many salesmen around, so I kind of go around the, the clothes, the men garments, and don't see anything looking like a name like that. And then at last, I say, man, and I ask him without any conviction at all, I have to say, <laughs> have you got this kind of thing? And he looks at me as if I were crazy and says, what? I've never heard of that. And I say, OK, thank you, thank you. And then I rush to the cafe to join Shumataji, feeling, OK, I've done my duty. And um, Shumataji was finishing to eat her sandwich or drinking, or I don't know. And then um, she says, OK, let's go. And she asked me, so Ruth, did you find what I asked you to find? And I said, no, Shemataji, the salesman said it did not exist or something like that. From that minute, and she was host in my house. She had slept in our bed. She had been, I mean, 24 hours, we looked after her. She did not talk to me anymore oh, gosh. until her <laughs> departure. That was it. I had blown it because I, I... had been thinking. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, but, you know, actually connect to this, something that you said before. Uh, have you ever... Um, okay, this is something that happened to me last year, actually. I, I've never been with Shimaji in, in real life, but somehow I often have dreams with Shimaraji and uh, last year I had uh, I don't know a couple of months in a row where every dream I had she gave me some sort of a papach <laughs> it was just so hard to to go through it and I just could see how I was pendling between guilt uh, some sort of uh, indirect anger and and then you know like you you just uh, because you you love her so much and anything that comes out of her it, it, it's so heavy you know and um and but once this yogini told me this amazing story that she got a, a monumental papach one of those that public in front of everyone where shimaji was you know loudly pick up your name and say what you did and you know so she's like i just wanted to dig a hole in the ground and just go 30 meters deep and hide forever you know like never come out uh and so she said that she took it very badly and 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 she was really again in between depressed uh, and then and then reacting and this and then that uh but then she said at some point a brother came to her or a sister i can't remember and he said can you imagine that god came on earth and spent 15 full minutes talking about you it doesn't matter what you said like but can you believe how important you are that she took the time to correct you individually about like even though it's tough it's so precious you know who gets such a a, a master to guide you so individually and she said when when the brother said that when the sister said that her whole view completely changed and then all of a sudden she felt drenched in love and it was such a such a beautiful story if if you can take it that way right yeah i have i can tell you a little story which i will make very big because i don't want people to yeah. recognize themselves or whatever but um our children were in rome in rome school and of course, sometimes it's not like now where you get your children back every three months and so on. They were there for a long time and ours had been for a long time. And on the way down to Cabela for puja, 
yogis were talking, oh, we are going to take our children back from Rome, it's okay, and so on. I was thinking, oh, I would like to do that, but there's no way I can do it because Sri Mataji would not accept if she did not say specifically, and so on. And we arrive in Kabela, and the yogi tells us, with a group of people, a yogi tells us, Sri Mataji wants to see you immediately. So we rush to the castle and the heart is doing bam, 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 you can imagine. Because again, I mean, the awe, the love was, but the awe of Sri Mataji was always there. And when, you know, you hear that she wants to see you, even if she's the incarnation, you're a little bit uh, unsure. Yes. <laughs> so we go to the castle, and at that time, for those who know the castle upstairs, the dining room was still fully empty. She had just arrived one month, two months okay. in Cabela. Fully empty. And there was one chair, Sri Mataji was sitting on the chair, and she asked all of us to sit around her. So we formed a circle. And she said, Ruth, sit here. And she had me sit just next to her. Okay. So when the yogis would look at Sri Mataji, they would see me. And you will see why I say it in detail. And she starts telling herself, I mean, I, yes, I saw Sri Mataji angrier, but that was in a, in a puja. That was terrible, a puja in Shamakhan. But now, for, for a little group of people, I rarely saw her so angry. And she was so angry, and she said, how dare you take your children back from Rome, not uh, wow. asking me without my authorization. And then, again, she would come back on me. And Ruth, how dare you? And Ruth, how could you? And of course, already at the beginning, I plunged forward and had my head against the, the floor. Uh, there was no carpets at the time, uh, it was just bare. And uh, I really, as you said, Fabrizio, I wanted to be 20 meters under the ground. <laughs> and uh, I did not cry. There, That was one part of the story which was very interesting. I did not cry. And all the time she would say, and Bruce, how could you, and how dare you, and so on. And then Bruce look at me, so I would raise my head a little bit and look at her hands on her lap, but I would not dare look higher, right? Wow. And then, and then at some point, she said, Ruth, what are you thinking? And uh, I had just remembered in my head on a puja talk where she says, if I tell you that it's day and actually it's night, for you it is day. Yeah. And she gives a few other examples like that. And I had just remembered that. And she tells me, Ruth, tell me what are you thinking? And I said, Sri Mataji, I am listening. I am not thinking, I am just listening. And she goes on and Bruce and Bruce, and then she talks to the others, and how could you, and how dare you, but to me specifically coming back. Wow. And then she dismissed us, and the next morning at the time, we would eat and have our meals on the esplanade in front of the castle, huh? when the, nowadays the Rose Garden. So we were having was there, and of course, I was not exactly too happy, as you can imagine. And somebody comes to me and says, uh, Ruth Trimataji wants to see you. So, of course, again, the heart boom. Heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and I go into her room, which was not the same room as now because everything was temporary. And there were only, I think, two people in the room. And I arrive in the room, and Sri Mataji tells me, so I had no time to bow or anything, Sri Mataji tells me, Ruth, I am sorry for the theater last night, but you were the only one who could take it. Wow. Mm. And there I start crying. And there I started crying, you know, as if suddenly everything went down. And after wow. two minutes, she dismissed me. And uh, imagine I had a mountain or a huge stone uh, off my head. Huh? And then in the evening, there was the puja. And very often at the end of the puja, she would call people to give them a present. And she called me first 
and gave me a handbag, which I, of course, still have. Wow. wow. So that was, again, a lesson. This test I passed. Many other tests I did not pass. But No, actually, I had a question because um, I see that, uh, especially in Italy, uh, the Yuva Shaktis are, I mean, not all of them, but few Yuva Shaktis are heavily involved into things, into organizing and everything. But they're like still studying, they still have things to do, you know? And uh, the last time that we had uh, the uncle Angerman, Angerman, on this podcast... Angelbert. 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 Yeah, that sounded like a superhero. Don't cut this one. Keep it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and uh, he said that literally Shimadaji told him to take a break from Sahaja Yoga to think about mm. his exams. And uh, I wonder how uh, could you um, find the balance between working, uh, studying, uh, if you've seen from other yogis uh, experience and uh, focusing on such a yoga at the same time okay first i'll tell you in two words the story of my marriage my yes. it was in india my vibrations were not okay and social matters now Bruce, you stay with me all the time so my punishment for my vibration is not <laughs> okay, is that I was non-stop with Shrimatiji, okay? <laughs> and then the second day or something like that, I was massaging her feet. She was sitting, she was not sleeping, related to my old story. And she told me about the man who would become my husband. And first I thought, ah, she wants to send him to Rome. So I said, fine, Shrimatiji, and so on. And then she said, no, 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 I was thinking of him for your husband. And I said, well, she must have been fine. And uh, then I thought and I told her, so I will go to England, she must have been. And before Sahaja Yoga, I was not really interested in having a quiet married life. Yeah. But after Sahaja Yoga, also the challenges of work, maybe because it was not easy. Uh, I said, Shrimataji, perfect, so I'll join him in England. And she said, no, 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 Ruth, you'll go on working and he will follow you. Wow. Ah. So already one illusion was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, so Shrimataji, uh, no children for us. And she said, yes, 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 of course you have children. He will look after the children. He loves being in the home. And, uh, he will look after the children, you go on working. So in two minutes, the idea which I had after Sahaja Yoga that I would stop working like the other yogini you know, and be a good yogini at home, that was all shattered. Uh, and um, so, yes, it was not always easy. There were times, I remember specifically in Bulgaria, the work was tough. It was after the fall of the Berlin Wall. I had a wow. horrible loss. And then at weekends, it was quite a big collective. And there was so much to do because I was the leader in the collective. And uh, we had faxes. We, don't, we did not have uh, smartphones at the time. Everyone was going by fax and telephone. And the whole weekend, it was administration and visas and God knows what for the collective. And of course, yeah. also meditation happened. And at the end of the Sunday, I would have maybe one hour or two free. And when our children were back from India school, uh, then I would have, you know, a few hours to be with my children. And yes, that was a tough time. Uh, but Trimataji wanted it. And I think that Trimataji gave me, again, this is the cage, you know, and the limitations which you push. Yeah. And she gave the strength and she showed to me that I could manage to work full time and to be a leader of a collective where there were lots of difficulties after these communist times, there was a lot to do over there and the translation languages and whatever. Srimad would come once a year, it would be also, uh, uh, of course, a challenge. Um, but I mean, it worked out. And just to say at the, at the beginning, I was married maybe 
two years or something. I remember once in Vienna, she said, uh, you ladies have to stay at home with the children until they're five years of age. I said only to two ladies to keep working. And I knew that I was one of the two ladies. Wow. Uh, but then again, after later, she changed. And again, they never take literally what Sri Mataji says, always to yeah. see in the specific case. Anyway, and she must have given me the strength toward the layers. She would, she always kind of directed in what country I should be transferred for uh, next, or gave me uh, two, three countries to choose of. It, it was decided, but the way she wanted. So she always guided my career, that's sure. And uh, she wanted me to be her instrument. And that's how much later I understood that all the attention she gave me, and which is such a great blessing. But it was not for me, for my ego, because she wanted me to be an instrument. Yeah. And that meant also to perform as she wanted me to perform. And so she gave me the strength to do both. And later on, she would tell me, so Ruth now have become an ambassador and so on. So definitely she wanted me to follow a certain path. And wow. I feel that she wanted me also sometimes to give priority into brackets to my work uh, in order to reach that aim uh, and not just to do anything I wanted or give full priority to Sahaja Yoga and to, yeah. to waste my career. Yeah. yeah. Auntie, um, okay, that was like a really clear guidance, you know, and I think that uh, talking to many yogis, uh, friends of mine, this is an, also another question that I had. Is she was giving you a, like a pra practical answer? Like she told she told you who, how your husband will be, you know, and she gave you so much guidance. After um, her departure, how did it change? How did her mother's guidance changed in your life? Yeah. Uh, there, my answer will be in, in two, three different points. First of all, also because of this career, the later years, I did not try to push myself forward towards Sri Mataji. In fact, I never tried. She would call me the first few years. And when she did not call me, I never tried to push myself forward. So I kept I kept a certain distance. Also, when I lived uh, uh, overseas, I would go less frequently to pujas, so I would see her less. So somehow it came progressively. She did not tell me Ruth go to Sri Lanka, and certainly not Ruth go to Lebanon. Uh, already the last posting before go to Holland, I think she told me, but I understand the inside later on why she sent me to Lebanon. The post before she told me, oh, more or less. Um, that's the first answer. So I had taken the habit of not having guidance from her directly. And by then, the children were big. There were less, fewer reasons, let's say, to keep, seek her guidance. So, of course, one goes and searches into the four less. Then I have also to say there was Grégoire. <laughs> and when there was a problem, a question, there was Grégoire. And Grégoire has been, he gave me realization. He told me about Sahaja Yoga before realization. He gave me realization and he was, let's say, next to me, even if we were not always in the same countries, but he was next to me step by step. And in that sense, our lives have been very uh, entangled. Uh, we had, of course, the similar professional experiences so we could understand also each other from both directions and he certainly knew me through and through and I think I knew him quite well. So there was Grégoire 
And um, yeah, then Gregoire left us, and I had to find, and I had to find the answers in myself. But somehow now, also because Shumatoj is not there, I have maybe a little bit withdrawn in my comfort zone, knowing that something I could get out. So it gave me that security, and now I feel I've become a bit lazy. So I can, I can you know, let go somehow. And now, obviously, I need less guidance than when she wanted me to be her instrument. I don't know if I've answered your question, Lily. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I would have a little story to tell you, maybe to finish, and then you'll see if you want to use it or not. I said it in the books of recollections, so it's not yeah. new, but anyway, it's very special. Yeah, Shimataji yeah. had asked you, first of all, let me say, you remember she says that the spirit has to go to the brain. And then when the spirit in, is in the brain, there you can feel one is God, right? And she had asked, that was maybe in 83, one yogi per country to come on quite short notice at Easter to come to India. So Grégoire was in Vienna, I was in Rome, and we went to India, and we were in Mumbai. She was a lot in a little flat. She would work day and night on people in this little flat. We would spend nearly the whole day in this little flat, and she would say, people, put one hand out, right hand to the window, left hand to the window, and all that. And the last day, uh, we met in the house of a yogi who was a famous yogi at the time. And there she got to, so she got the mayor of Mumbai coming or something. It was a yogi of a Delhi, yeah. let's say. And she told us, okay, now we were, as I said, one person per country from Europe mainly. So it was mainly the leaders. I was leader in Rome. And she said, now you can all come to my feet. When mother would say that, as you know, we would slip our hands under her feet. She would lift her feet, keep wow. the, the heel down, lift the rest of her feet. We would slip our hands. And we would put then our forehead on top of her feet, and we would remain like that until she would lift her feet, and that was the signal that it was over, and we would withdraw wow. our hands. So <clears throat> I went to her feet, I did the same, and I felt a crack in my brain wow. where I was touching her feet. And I felt like the blood circulating from her to me. I mean, there was no more separation wow. between her and me. And she kept me a long time, I think, because when she lifted her feet first, my face must have been very different. I could not see it. But one leader of another country said, immediately said, Ruth, what happened? So something happened. Wow. And I felt only one thing. Wow. One with God. I am one with her. And little time after she left for the airport, she took me in the car. I was sitting next to her. And, you know, these Indian cars are very small, so I was squashed against her. And then there was somebody else next to me. We were three in the back. And I was just in total bliss, feeling, wow, I am one with her. Wow. And then we told her goodbye at the airport. And I was absolutely radiant. All the times before when we would say goodbye to Shimataji, I would start crying like a baby because my mother would go <laughs> and, and there I felt I'm one with her. So whether she goes or is here is not important, right? Wow. And that remained like one of my deep, deep stories with mother. And only recently, 
did I understand hearing, I think, again, the puja talk of uh, Shivaratri Puja in Pandarpur, when she says, and the spirit goes to the brain, that's when you can be one with her. And only recently, I think I realized that probably at that time, my spirit went up to my brain. And that's why I felt this immense sense of unity and oneness with God. And that was amazing. I mean, wow. I, I wish I could feel it more often, but since I realized that in my meditation, I tried to consciously or, or with the desire, I don't know how to say it, to bring my spirit up to my brain. And I, I feel vibrations around my Agya and Sasrara. And uh, yeah, I discover now so many things which I did not understand at that time when I was with her, or when I was in her physical presence. So, Auntie, what did you say? Just a really small story. <laughs> it it's amazing. Story, but it's it was incredible. like the best story in Sahaj ever. <laughs> Can I ask you an advice for, um, I would say, younger yogis? Because still, there is like a, a really close friend of mine, and sometimes she goes up and down emotionally, and she goes like, I don't feel closer to mother. I don't feel closer. I don't feel close to her. I don't feel uh, her. I, mean, I don't feel her attention on me. It can sound a bit uh, ego oriented, but uh, she's like, I'm struggling with this. Um, how would you, what would you suggest for that type of situation? I would say, first of all, sometimes for months, I don't feel close to mother and I don't really feel mother in my heart. And maybe I'm the only one, maybe it happens to many of us, I don't know. But sadly, I don't always at all feel mother as close as I would like her to feel her. Then the second thing I would say, it's like the sun and the clouds. Mother is always there. Just sometimes allow the clouds yeah. to be more or less thick between us and mother, between us and the sun, or they come, whether we want it or not, this also, I don't know, but she's always there. We just don't feel her so much. The other thing I would say is that in period of difficulties, hang on to her sari. Hang on to her sari. Always. And recently I heard again this talk where she said, allow your heart to get drenched in your mother's love. And even if you don't feel it, it is there. And I would say another thing, I tell you now, these things which have helped me huh? all these years with all these ups and downs, because like your friend, gosh, I have so often gone from left to right and right to left, as I told you. This poem of Kabir and the goat, when it is alive, it says, I am, I am, I am. I can't remember the sound it makes. And when it's dead, the, its intestine is used for the strings of the instrument. And there it says, to he, to he, to he, you are, you are. And in these moments of difficulties, let just remain with one or two catch, catch notions, if you want. Either the Kabir poem, or hang on to her sari, or allow your heart to be drenched in your mother's love or something like that, and it helps you to stick, to go through. And I mean, I am also without her physical presence now, and since so many years, as I told you already, before she left this body. And we all have to find her inside. And these things can help. You know, Auntie, still, uh, I'm, I'm still recovering from the story, so it's hard to speak at the moment because it was such a, a beautiful story. But uh, a bit surprising to me, 
the, the moment I felt actually the, the pinnacle of the story, of course it was beautiful when, you know, you touched Shimaji's feet and, and the crack and the face change. Uh, that was, of course, uh, made me a bit jealous and it was extremely beautiful. But uh, the, 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 the part where I completely felt my Kundalini shot up, shot up is when you said, and Shimaji was departing and I didn't feel emotional about it. Like, because I was so much one that that the patch didn't mean much because I was with her, even if she wasn't there. And that to me, really, it exploded inside me. Like, in spite of the fact that if you want, the previous part of the story was, was you know, extremely beautiful too. And, and I would say in these cases, um, because of course, I think we all go through that. We go through tough times. But what I really liked to that part of the story is that once you have achieved the level of confidence within you in acknowledging who she is, even when you don't feel it, you are confident she's there. To me, that's really the something I, I've observed a lot of the older yogis, and I've tried to learn that that even like the fact that your vibrations are hot doesn't mean anything, does not negate the existence of God. The fact that you know you don't have a miracle happening today or something that gives you a sign, you know, your confidence cannot be shaken once you've touched that that point. And I, I feel that was really the, the the beauty of your story, this thing of uh, there is no more line. So, yeah. and even if I don't see it, I still know that there is no line, you know? It was yeah. so, yeah. so beautiful. And the, the ending, it was just absolutely yeah. a masterpiece. And, so, so yeah. nice. And you see, I did not always feel one with her, but the thing of not crying anymore when I would be separated, that was for life. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. That, that was amazing. And uh, I think uh, that with this last sentence, we can close the episode. And uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, you can leave a comment if you want. You can share the episode the, with your collective, with your friends, with anyone within Sajja Yoga, of course. And thank you really much, Auntie, for joining us. Welcome. Thank you, Fabrizio, for still being uh, a great co-host. <laughs> and... Thank you for inviting me, gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me. This has been a beautiful experience for me. Ah, oh, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and one, one little word, sorry, before we close uh, to... You know, to me, it's always amazing because I know Auntie, but actually I didn't know any of these stories. And I think this is also the beauty of having these charts that you, you get all these treasures. And uh, uh, this is for aunties, uh, for Uncle Horacio and Auntie Maria Mele, all the ones that came before. These episodes when you share your personal stories, which sometimes are also tough, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you have to put yourself out there are really the most appreciated because we we always receive such amazing feedbacks and comments and often people say it was always almost like i was there with humanity when i was listening to the podcast and it's really it really something beautiful to hear so i just want to make sure that um you can feel all that appreciation because the the, the people watching really really enjoy that and, and i'm sure they're gonna love this one thank you auntie thank you, thank you. So, thank you everyone this was Sahaj Times Stories with Shimada G bye good night everyone